I can edit that part out, yes. Welcome to your SketchUp tutorial for today. Uh, this is for Saturday's media practice class and anyone else who is interested. Sorry, for, that's the disclaimer for the video. Okay, so when you're in SketchUp, um, there should be this little person, uh, little person, this model of a person uh, sitting there. Um, and that will give you your sort of like baseline reference for scale. Uh, since we're in the architectural environment, um, we're going to design everything in, was it feet and inches I think I chose? Um, which may or may not be necessary for importing into Unity um, because you can always scale your objects and your, uh, your assets either before you export or when you're in Unity. Um, for starters, uh, what should we do? What should be useful? Oh, you know what? Hang on. For starters, I'll explain the interface. How about that? <clears throat> I would say basics. basics. So um, looking at the toolbar up at the top, uh, all these different tools, um, I actually have a pretty expansive toolbar um, set up on mine uh, because I have a lot of uh, plugins and extensions um, that help with the drawing creation service. Um, but if I show you, like, uh, this is the basic toolbar down here. Um, so you have your select tool, your eraser, line drawing, uh, rectangles, um, and a, a handful of different sort of like basic tools. Um, my toolbar is augmented with sort of additional functions um, that I will explain as we go through. Uh, for basic navigation, uh, the O key on your keyboard is the orbit key. It's also this red green arrow. And when this is selected, your cursor is going to show you what it is. When you click, it's actually your orbit tool. So you can change your view. You can look around an object. But keep in mind that um, it will uh, rotate around whatever object you click on. So if I make a box over here and I like hover the cursor, the orbit tool over here, it's going to look sort of in that area as the center point versus um, like orbiting around this person, which is constantly giving me a single perspective. OK, uh, there should always be like a horizon line to help you orient yourself in the space. Um, so that's your looking tool. Uh, there's also the sort of panning tool. So if you're uh, if you have the orbit selected, you can hold down the shift key, and when that happens, you'll have a little hand, and then you could just drag it around and keep that sort of perspective. So if I look over here, I can drag it around. Ooh. Um, also helps to look for things. Um, it, at any point, you get lost in the view. Like maybe I'm going to scroll out. I'm going to zoom out really, 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 really far. Like, I don't know where my person is. I don't know where my model is, whatever. Um, to reset the camera view, uh, command left bracket will reset it to show you whatever model is in your file, in your workspace. Yes, command left bracket. I kind of wish there was a way to like display what keys I was pressing on screen. What's that? Expensive That's expensive software? Hmm. OK. All right, uh, so that's looking. That's navigating. Um, our eraser tool, uh, if we click that, we could just, oh, yeah, I erased it. Oh, no. Um, and I didn't just click on it. I actually clicked and dragged. O is, o is orbit. Um, shift O, oh no, shift orbit and then shift, uh, shift click. So it would be like a subset of orbit. So hit you, or you just hit shift and click and drag, right? When you're under, when you're in orbit. You're right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, eraser is E, uh, pencil, uh, to actually like draw a line. 
is L. Um, but under L, there's also um, this freehand drawing. Now, with the freehand drawing, um, you kind of draw a circle, but um, it doesn't exactly uh, work as you think it would work because you're kind of drawing in three dimensions. Um, so what happens is I'm actually like, when I click and start to draw, it gives me that blue line. And that blue line means I'm drawing on the Z axis. So the Z axis is the vertical axis, the up and down. So anything on the blue axis is going to show as a vertical plane. So when I look around this, oh yeah, it's a, it's not vertical. I'm sorry. This is a horizontal plane because I was drawing on the blue axis. Um, so I'm looking down the blue axis or up the blue axis. So if I want to draw a rectangle or a circle, which is the C key, rectangle is the R key. These things should start to make a certain amount of sense. Um, the reset camera? Was that command left bracket? Command left bracket. Squiggly bracket? Uh, squiggly or square, whatever. Yeah, uh, yes, left bracket. So I'm drawing a circle um, on that axis. And also, you'll notice that as I sort of move this around, as I move my cursor around after you know, uh, clicking once to draw a circle, it'll show me um, that I'm drawing and expanding my circle along the red axis or the green axis. And those will be your x, y, your basically like left and right depth and width uh, axes, coordinates. Um, so if I wanted to draw on those, like I look down the red axis and then I draw a rectangle on the red axis, and there we go. Yay, I made a little, I can make a little TV. Yay. Flat screen TV, okay. I'll show you how I did that in a second. Um, alternatively, green axis and blue axis. Um, <clears throat> I will. No, oh. I'm just, I'm writing a few ahead. P, yes, P is pull or extrude. Um, I is, no, U, Y, T, R, E, W, Q. Q is rotate. Woo! Yeah. Um, A is draw an arc. Okay. So draw an arc, you click two points, and then draw arc on whatever axis you want. In this case, it's, since I'm, I started on the red axis, it'll give me blue and green options. And then when I look at it <clears throat> in three dimensions, you can see I built a little shelf here. Um, S, excuse me, is scale. Uh, so if I want to make something larger, um, what I can do is either like if I'm on the S and I hit scale uh, and I don't select anything, um, it kind of highlights all these different objects. Yeah. Um, so if I want to scale the person, uh, hit the S key, hover over the object, click the object, and then I can use these uh, scale points to like um, alter the size of the person. Um, or the size of the object, whatever it is. Whoops, that's not what I want. Scale. Um, now it's in three dimensions. What? I was doing. Ah, it's really wonky. Wow, look at that. Oh, because it like moves with the frame. Okay. Um, Jesus. Okay, let's uh, undo that because that's a little unruly. All right. Um, scale. Uh, oh, F is the follow me or, or the um, the uh, follow me. It's also called the offset. So um, this means that if I have a shape and I want to make that same shape, uh, I just click on that surface and I could, you know, replicate that shape, expand it, contract it. Um, 
I'll show you where this will be helpful in a minute. Yeah. But this essentially creates um, different objects. Um, and you can tell different objects are different faces. This is a terminology you should know. Face is the fill between lines. Um, and there are two sides to every face. There's the, the, the correct orientation, and then there's the, the inverted orientation. You can always tell in SketchUp default templates because it'll be like this light white and like a dark gray blue or medium gray blue. Yes, please. So um, one of the things that you guys are going to be able to do today is make uh, some assets if you want in SketchUp, and then we'll import those into Unity, and we can like um, use them in, in a kind of game we're going to make. Um, the one thing to remember, though, is Nick's pointing out, like you know, poly these polygons or faces have two sides. Um, if you want an object to be three-dimensional in Unity, um, if you, the inverted face here, the sort of darker colored face, will not be seen. So you need to make sure that all of your faces are oriented to the reverse of this. Um, so like the, the front of the, um, of the object. Um, yeah, so like, like this you would see. This is the back face. You won't see that in uh, in Unity. Right. This is actually a handy thing uh, to say. We're not going to talk about optimization too much today, but uh, it's a really handy thing if you want to like make a bigger game and have a smaller file and have it run better. Is like objects that you're not going to see the back of. It's a really like kind of like good practice to just delete those faces because then the the computer doesn't have to render them. Right, so you can see I'm just messing around with this and all the all those extrusions using the P tool. Um, you can just, as long as a face is uh, consistent, meaning if it's not curved, if there are, um, if it's like contained, like if it's a single plane or face that has <clears throat> a closed face on it, it will, you can extrude that. Um, and it also extrudes uh, based on the direction, and or the faces extrude based on what direction you pull. So if I'm on uh, the reverse side, and I pull an invert of uh, the back face, it's going to all be that inverted. So then when I look inside and under it, and that's going to be the outward face. Does that make sense? All right, let's look at my whole drawing. Whole drawing, great. Um, there is one thing you can do uh, to make it easier on yourself. So uh, I'm going to show you that uh, real quickly. It's like, say I have a bunch of different faces. Um, I can orient, I can right click on my face and orient all my faces that way. Oh, you know what? I didn't do it. Um, huh, you know what? Here, I'll show you. So if a couple of my faces are reversed for whatever reason, um, as I'm working with things, I can actually right click on uh, the correct orientation and it'll flip those automatically um, for three, four like closed three-dimensional objects. Um, I'm going to close that off. There we go. All right. Uh, the K key uh, will show you hidden lines. So anything that's behind a face or internal to something um, will show you those in a dotted line. Uh, one thing with the, the hidden lines is that um, you can actually select your lines through the, through the faces. Um, because they're hidden, whereas when you're not, you can't see those. So whatever you click on is going to be the foremost object on the in the field of work or the workspace. Just stop me if uh, something's not making sense or if you have a question. Um, 
few other things. Uh, double clicking on a face will select the face and its border. Triple clicking on a face will select a face, its border, and every connected face and edge. Um, so because everything in that object, that weird, this weird object that I made it, is connected, um, it'll connect or it'll select that. So in order to connect something, all I really need to do is draw a line from one object to the other. There. And now all of that is connected because it's literally connected with a line. Um, and as you're drawing, um, you can uh, sort of draw anywhere, um, but if you want to draw off of something that already exists, it always gives you the end point of an object or of a line in little green dots or the midpoint in a little blue dot. Um, but if you want to connect it to the edge, it gives you a little red square. Um, so if I go to my freehand again, I want to connect that, draw on the blue, whoa, and drop, end, yeah. Um, okay. Mm, basics, what else? Uh, move tool is M. It's also uh, this multi-directional arrow. So I can select any face or any object and just drag it around. Um, now it's going to drag it around um, in the direction that's sort of that's within your window. So if I'm gonna go here and drag it around, I can drag it up, left, right, but as soon as I like do this, it's gonna drag it in some other weird ways. Um, it's also limited, or how you can move these things, it's also limited by what it's connected to. Um, for example, like this face uh, is connected to like all these other things, so I can't really like move it effectively. I'm sort of moving it on the blue axis a little bit. Um, but I can also, let's see, um, it'll also snap to the other axes, red and green. Um, so if I want to move it on the green, there, and I can move this on the blue, and then I'll move this on the red. Oh, I can't move that on the red because I am blocked by this other thing that it's connecting. Um, so in order to move it on the red, um, there's some things I can do that I will show you. Um, moving along, uh, oh, uh, the shift orbit is also accessible with the H key, H as in hand. So um, orbit or hand, you can use the hand key to drag it. Um, F, D, Z, uh, the Z tool uh, will uh, allow you to zoom in on any bit, uh, like moves how you look at things. C is circle, V is nothing. B is paint bucket. So um, if I select that, I can go through my, uh, my colors and make something kind of funny. Um, but what happens here is that it's only per face. You're only co adding color information um, either on forward faces or reverse faces. It's not the entirety unless what you do is select the entirety of the object uh, and then use the paint bucket to paint twice. Whoops. Uh, so it'll be all on the outside face. But um, if I want it everywhere, I have to click it on the inside and outside. But now I don't know what my reverse faces are, so I'll just leave that be. There is also the, um, uh, you can also add textures, glass and mirrors. Uh, oh, 3D printing. Huh. Apple colors, um, asphalt and concrete, add that texture. There we go. Um, landscaping, fencing, and vegetation. Ooh, I can add a fence. Hey, hey cool. Look at that. And that's just a, um, it's basically a PNG file uh, that looks like a fence, and it's duplicating that across across the entirety of the thing. Uh, some trestling, trellising, no, trestling. Barbed wire, we'll put barbed wire there, yeah. 
Um, we, we can experiment with this text. I don't know if sometimes Unity is a little funny, but importing text is important. Sometimes it works for it. It depends on the size of the model. Yeah. You also notice that that color information, as I extrude, is retained. So if I pulled this face out, um, it's going to maintain all that information, thankfully. Oh, tile, cool. Let's. So when I say this is for like architectural purposes, really, it is for architectural purposes. Hey, I'm designing a bathroom. I need to put tile in. Um, wood. Let's add a wood texture. That's not wood. Let's add a... Let's put a wood floor there. There. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, kind of building this thing. Uh, you can also... Um, camera tools. Window. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. Some of these other tools um, that I have in here on this toolbar are extensions that I've downloaded from the extension warehouse and uh, this place um, is kind of great because there are a lot of really cool things you can download um, or add on that aren't um, like native I mean you could do them but it would take a lot more to actually like work through this process for example there's a bevel a corner bevel or an edge bevel plugin so it actually allows me to um, like create a beveled edge. Uh, so yes, do that. Woo. So I beveled that pretty severely. Um, so if I go to my beveled edge and I want to, um, like make it a little smaller, uh, I want to make my offset like, uh, five inches. I could set that value. So then when I click on a face, it's going to show me, um, in green where it's beveling from, or in red where it's beveling from, and green where the new bevel will be. And if I click OK, hit return, I have my bevel. There, my five inch bevel on my large object. Now, one thing that is um, kind of difficult in some cases, like I can't see the edge if I have this texture. So if I want to work from something, um, I actually have to select, go to right click and select bounding edges. And then I can look and see like the hidden edges are always dotted and the like hard edges are in uh, bold. So if I want to make a, f well, okay. First, I can't like extrude off of this surface uh, or any of these surfaces because they're not bound by a hard line. Whereas like, this one is bound by a hard line. So if I wanted to extrude uh, that this trapezoid on the top edge bevel, I'd actually have to like draw either draw the line around it. But what this is going to do is actually like, there we go. So now I have my face. Uh, it also like created one inside, um, which I don't want because uh, it sort of like automatically fills in holes when you do uh, the line drawing, but that allows me to extrude that surface now. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that's you. That's fine. Tell them I'm, I'm not here. Okay. Speaking of Gene Albano. No way. Is that really Gene Albano? She <laughs> she has something that either works for her or like that she knows named Christopher. And she doesn't seem to know that I'm not that person. And every like I get phone calls and texts and brand new points. So yeah. Um, there's also this 3D text tool. Uh, which is kind of fun because um, mm, what's a what's a quote? What's a notable quote? Um, Hello world. Uh, fine, fine. Okay, so yellow world. It's going to be in Tahoma. You know what? Let's do uh, Futura. 
because um, we talked about him. Do I have Futura? Yep, Futura! Height 10 inches. Okay, great. And I will place it and I have Hello World. Um, one thing that just happened that you'll notice is that uh, it's bounded by this uh, bold blue line. And this bold blue line designates a group of objects um, which are not directly editable. Um, oh, it's attached to the wood, so it moves with it. Um, in order to edit an object or a group, um, well, actually, for example, let's make that a group. So I'm going to triple click on it. So everything connected is going to turn into a group. I'm going to hit Command G. And there we go. Now I can move my group however I want. Um, but in order to edit it, I have to double click on it. And then everything that's not in the group goes to this gray faded out. And then I could edit this as I need, as I want. Also, um, I'll remind everybody of this, that when you create any objects that you're going to import into Unity uh, from SketchUp, you need to group them, <coughs> because otherwise it will import individual, it will import individual faces and vertices, and which is a nightmare to deal with. So, uh, Hmm. All right, so um, so I've got that group. Uh, so if, like I said, if I want to go in and edit, um, I can extrude any surface. I'm going to make a nice little landscape here. Whoops. Oh, oh that's what I want to do. Hello, world. Um, and I'm going to expand that surface. So it gets really funky. I'm definitely not doing this for 3D printing, um, which I can show you after a little bit. I'm doing this for importing into something that does not have to deal with what's called watertight meshes. Um, right now, uh, this letter D is a watertight mesh. Um, so I can double check that because... Uh, I have inst I'm going to make a group there. I have installed this uh, little globe object, um, which is called a solid. It's part of the solid tools extension. Um, and it, essentially, it will repair things that are wrong with a section of your model for 3D printing. So if I click on that, it tells me everything's shiny. Awesome. Um, so when I double click on it and maybe add some of the some extra lines or something like that, um, Great, so that's kind of nuts. Uh, and then when I click on that, it says there are two stray edges. A uh, stray edge is just something that, uh, uh, an edge or a line that isn't connected to anything. Um, so I can just fix that and it'll delete those automatically. Also, um, there are some other tools like uh, these, this set of four here, which is kind of like an edge connect. So if I draw a line there and a line there and select those two, I can bridge them with this tool, or maybe this tool. There we go. Um, since they're not parallel or perpendicular, whoops. Um, it just drew a line between them to connect them. But since it's a, a quadrogram, no. What's the four-sided shape? Quadrilogram. What? Parallelogram. Quadrilateral, yeah. Um, it's actually not square, so I have to like make some other stuff happen there. Make it a triangle. Um, oh, it's not going where I wanted to go. There we go. Let's see where I have my faces. Okay, so um, as I draw this, draw on the axes. I want to see my hidden lines, and now um, notice that there is this triangle, or this, I'm sorry, this square face right there. So um, that's now on the inside of my model. So when I go to create it, it says, oh, whoops. When I go to check it, it says there are internal faces. Oh, great. Um, 
fix it, it just removes those faces. Uh, so now I have a solid object for 3D printing. Um, so if I wanted to export this thing for 3D printing, um, two things I could do, I could go to uh, export 3D, oh, you know what, it's actually not there. So export my 3D model, it's gonna give me my file formats. Um, uh, STL is the standard like 3D printing format. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now uh, because that's not what we're doing. Um, but uh, you'll want to export as day, uh, DAE file um, for importing into Unity. These other formats will work. OBJ. Um, uh, I th Some of those. Yeah, FBX is weird. Um, 3DS will probably import, but 3DS is more like for Maya. Um, OBJs. DWGs are, oh, excuse me. I think OBJs work a lot of files for I think FBX works. I'm not really trying not to do Yeah, well, we'll stick with what we know then. Um, okay, we'll come to that. So if I wanted to 3D print, 3D print that, that weird letter, I could do that just by exporting, taking into 3D printing software, and blah, 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 do that. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to fuck this up um, intentionally. I'm going to select this curved surface on here. Um, now, what's going to happen is I'm going to make this not fun for 3D printing. So I'm just going to expand it. And what happens um, when I expand something this way is that all the lines, all the edges that are attached to it um, get pulled along with it. Um, so this is really not 3D printing friendly. So if I click on this now, now I have uh, surface borders and internal face edges, and it doesn't like that because that's gonna create weird pockets and stuff. Um, I don't really care right now because I'm not doing this for 3D printing, but it's showing me the reverse faces. Um, so if I go into this, I wanna, whoop. yes, I know you're there. What is that? I just want to go into it. I just want to edit it. Okay, well, I'm going to explode the group, so I have this, and then... Oh, it's locked. Oops. There. Ah, unlock all. Yep. Uh, I'm going to orient my faces. Oh, look at that. Flip that one. That one is backwards. Maybe I want these to be on the outside. Because... Haha. -ha. We're going to drag that in. All right. Um, also, with the viewing environment, um, command and the number keys will give you different perspectives. So command one is always the top down, command two, bottom up, command three, uh, one side, four, the other side, five, and six are the other sides. And then seven is your sort of like three quarters view, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, it gives you a nice overview of your environment. Pin lines. Uh, some of these other plugins that I have um, are really designed more for 3D printing. Um, but there is this one, which is basically like a mirror tool. So if I wanted to mirror this object or face, I would just select that and then paste it there. And I mirrored the object based on that plane. Um, conversely, you can also copy and paste an object right click and uh, flip it along a certain axis. And then um, when you move objects, you can drag them to any other point. So um, I drag this to, uh, I'm gonna drag it inside that one. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it's a solid object. Oh, internal faces and reverse faces, fix them all, all right. And then I'm going to fix them all on that one, everything shiny. So now um, I can use uh, this tool, um, plugin called the Union Tool, which will combine, whoop, I should combine, oh, they're not, something's going on with those. No, it's, you do it as combined groups. Um, oh, because there's, they're not solid objects. 
Oh, that's why. So I need to pull that inside. Uh, okay, also I need to intersect my faces with everything because um, that makes sure that it gives me solid lines all around. L tool to rebuild my face. Oh, that's not what I wanted either. Hmm. Shucks, okay. Well, all right, let's see what happens. Fix them all, yeah. Right. Oh, get rid of that. Interesting. So now I have, okay. And then I can get rid of that and that. Now I have some stray lines I need to get rid of. Stray edges, boom, they're gone. So now if I copy and paste this object and sort of push it in there, I should be able to union this and this. And voila, there we go. They are now, oh no, that didn't union, that subtracted this. So union this and this, there we go. Now they're one object that's hollow and watertight. And that is, uh, okay. That's my weird little object. Okay. Uh, some of these other tools, like um, these boxes and these things, uh, allow you to, like, skew, um, which is, they're not necessarily, like, um, it would take a lot more, um, Uh, a lot more sort of processing power on the part of the user to actually like articulate some of these um, gestures. Okay, so this I messed up and now it's not viable. Surface borders, what? Okay, well, that's too bad. Um, back to the edges, if I wanna find all the edges, uh, there's this uh, function called soften edges. So I can either like make everything totally smooth or I can drop it all, uh, drop the level down and then it actually shows me the entirety of the triangle mesh. So it's showing me every triangle that's possible. Um, and I'm gonna paint this all one color. There, now this is showing me where I have holes because I don't have a transparent thing. So there's some holes there. Close that. Oh, well, maybe that's just a reverse face. It's possible. Oh, and there's a line so I can do that and close it up. Do that and close it up. Whoa, oh. So anytime you have um, like an opening that has uh, endpoints on the edges of it, it kind of, it works on the triangle mesh principle. So like if you have an open rectangle, um, you do need to make a triangle, like not physically, like virtually draw a triangle um, between these points. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna close the holes. Um, so these large openings, I have to click and click, and there we go, point to point, and now Let's see, select all, intersect faces with selection. Okay, so now let's see if it's a solid object. Uh, no, it's not, um, which is a, too bad. Doesn't matter, because I'm gonna export this for Unity. Is everybody doing all right? It's kind of a lot of information. Um, can This can be our, this, is, this will be my building asset. How many of you have built something while I've been going through this? Okay, yeah. Um, if that wasn't clear, you guys should have been building something. Um, we'll, we'll have some time this afternoon. Um, there's also a couple of things that uh, we'll probably do later. Um, we, uh, we'll pick up on SketchUp after lunch, too. Yeah, there's a couple of things that we could go over that are... Um, just some basic like low poly, polygon kind of stuff. And then also um, one thing, I, I don't do this personally anymore, but you can uh, do 
um, uh, terrain, like contoured terrain and stuff in SketchUp, uh, which we could use. We'll probably, maybe after the break, we'll do like the full, like make a quick thing and then go through the process of importing that into yeah. Unity just so you can see it like how that works. Yeah, we'll do that. That's a good idea. Um, so in the last three minutes, I just want to show you a few more things that that's kind of great about SketchUp. Um, is that it has um, this other thing, other than the extension warehouse, is the 3D warehouse, um, which is accessible both uh, through the software and um, directly at 3dwarehouse.sketchup.com or whatever it is. Um, so basically, everything is modeled here. Um, you have kind of anything you want to pull from. Like there's um, like all these different like design studios that have stuff, like tables and chairs. But, um, okay, uh, somebody shout out a thing. Pumpkin. 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 Let's find a pumpkin. Oh, here are all the pumpkins in various ways. Here's a... <laughs> um, I made a pumpkin. That looks like a giant peach. <laughs> My pumpkin's too big. Okay. So, how about... Uh, how about this one? We'll look at it. Great. Um, I'm going to download it directly into my model. Load progress and click. And there it is. There's my pumpkin. And I'm going to make my pumpkin huge. Yeah, there's my pumpkin. Okay. Um, go back to the 3D warehouse. Still on my pumpkins. Okay. Uh, what else? One other thing. Ketchup. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, ketchup bottles, ketchup bottles, ketchup bottles, ketchup bottles. Ketchup bottles, interesting. There's no ketchup spills. Uh, that is a good point because uh, it's uh, like organic forms, liquid forms, are tremendously difficult to model in SketchUp. Uh, objects, architectural objects, did not design objects with curves is are pretty easy, um, but Ketchup spill. Let's see. Oh, no ketchup spill. What about, um, let's just look up water. And all that is, all this water thing is, is a uh, textured surface. There's no actual, like, uh, water models like we saw um, in the OpenGL that we saw. So if I look at this one, um, let's see how. Let's see, download directly into the model. Ooh, it's a big one. Okay. Uh, come on. Come on. Don't fail me now. Place my fountain. Uh, come on, scale. There we go. And move it over. I want to look at how this is actually made because I think this is just, well, it looks three-dimensional. So each one of these things, each one of these little blobs um, is a polygon. Look at that. So I could, whoops, select it. Nope. Oh, you, ah, it's all grouped crazy, like layers and layers and layers and layers. There we go. I want to see actually where the edges are. So select bounding edges. And there's my nutso polygon. Um, so however many of those were modeled. And then uh, the surface is basically like an image that was imported onto all those surfaces. So while it may look like water from a distance, you zoom in. Whoops. Well, that does not look like water. Okay, this is one problem with SketchUp sometimes. It's if you have a really like uh, large file that you're working with, it, there's a little bit of latency. It, it lags a little bit. Um, but this is where this bracket tool comes in handy. Oh, it's huge. Okay, bracket tool. Go back to the picture. Um, it, it's also possible to, or at least it seems to happen to me a lot, like you'll do something kind of accidentally that just like renders like a crazy number of faces and it just quits. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I also I like this tool. It's the um, not the. Do you mean the poll tool? No, the follow me. Oh yeah, uh, the follow me is kind of a great tool because um, like if you have a surface and you select it, you hit uh, follow me. Whoops. Um, and then you can uh, extrude it along. Well, typically, there we go. Extrude it along any other curved surface or straight line. Boop, boop, boop. And then end up with like these awesome, crazy shapes. So uh, that's it for now. Um, We'll look at some other things when we come back from lunch. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you.